Hello Fab fans, my name's Josh and welcome to episode 4. Today I'll be taking you through the build process of this. What? They got a tank. No, not that type of tank. This is an aluminium header tank. But before we get into building that, I just want to give you guys a quick reminder that this is the last week for our first monthly giveaway where one of you guys could be in the chance of winning this very seat. So make sure you don't miss out. Let's get this ball rolling and run the tape. This week I'll be taking you through the build process of this aluminium header tank. Before we get into this, what exactly does this tank do? And more importantly, can it fly? Thanks for clearing that up BA. This tank's main job is to provide an expansion chamber for a vehicle's cooling system. With the high temperatures involved in an engine's operation, the liquid in the cooling system expands during use and creates an increase in pressure. This tank gives liquid an area to expand into and ensures the cooling system stays at a stable pressure. Now that we know what the tank needs to do, we need to make sure that it has the capacity to achieve this. I'll be working on a capacity requirement of 800 milliliters for this tank, and we'll be using a 90 mil diameter round tube for the main body. Using this handy online volume calculator, we can see that the body needs to be 120 millimeters in length to create this. With our length now worked out, it's time to get marking, cutting and cleaning. With our tube now cut to length and cleaned up nicely, it's time to move on to the bead former. Here, we'll be using a set of tooling that I've had made specifically for this type of tank by my old mate Adam at Rapid Engineering. This tool creates a single wide bead, which is perfect for stiffening up our tank body. To ensure that the bead is central, we need to create a mark at the center point of the body minus half the bead width. With the guideline now in place, we can put this through the former. With our main body now cut and formed, we need to decide on how to cap these off. We could be boring here and simply put a flat plate on, but we're not about that. We're going to use these instead. Yep, we're going to add domed caps to this tank. I'll be showing you guys two different ways to make these. One is the hard way and one is the smart way. But before we get to that, this needs to go back into the bead former. Here we will be using the aptly named tank rolls. This set of tooling forms a radius around each end of the tank body, creating a smooth intersection for the domed caps. With this detail added, we have created a small step to fill with weld. This will prevent the weld from disturbing the overall shape of the tank. Now the body is fully prepped for a dome cap, we're going to go over to the press and take a look at the tool that we're going to use to make them. This brings us to our first pressing tool of the day. Another tool made by Adam at Rapid Engineering, who we'll hopefully be meeting soon. This tool has the option of two different cap sizes. With the tool in being made to suit two completely different sizes of tube, we need to work out how's best to make them fit our job. And we have two different ways of doing that. The first is the hard way, where we'll be manually marking and cutting the blank.
With the first blank cut, it's time to get pressy. Here, we centre the blank on the female using the outer edges and use a hole in the centre of the male to align the centre mark. With the tooling being an exact size for the material we are using, it is very tight to remove once pressed. After watching this back, I've realised I would normally put this back in the press to split it, but I obviously hadn't had enough hammer time today. So, we need to put it back in the press and remove these marks. And that is our first cap formed. All we have to do now, trim these edges to suit. There are a few different ways to mark this, but I found that using a level off cut of tube is usually the easiest way to ensure you keep your mark central on the cap. And that is our first cap formed. Very labour intensive and nowhere near to perfect. And every time I do it, I get a little crown. He is king now. Oop. Now that I've finished proclaiming myself as the king of the garage, we're gonna do it the smart way. Yep, working smart is always better than working hard. Here, our blank is laser cut and incorporates four internal slits. These cuts create the final pressed parts and allow us to create an exact smaller cap inside of the larger tooling. You can see where the outer material has split away from the cap, avoiding any unwanted pressure on our part. Again, I'm not exactly sure why I decided to use the hammer here, but luckily, this part splits away with ease. And that is the second cap nearly formed. We're not going to worry about the pressing in the centre as we're going to get rid of that in a second. And all we'll have to do... Ooh. As I was saying, all we have to do is remove these tabs and that is one cap ready to go. And with that, we have our two caps. I have redone the hard one because it was rubbish and we might as well make a nice job of this. And there, it's one tank body ready for tacking. So it's just gone five o'clock. I'm gonna leave it there because this all gets a bit noisy and I like to try and keep it calm. So we'll carry on with this tomorrow. And this is day two. We're gonna start the day by drilling this, the top cap. This hole will allow us to add the radiator cap, one of the key working parts of this tank. With this drilled, we need to remove any burrs that might interfere with the fitting and welding of the cap. Now that's sorted, we need to spruce this cap up a bit. The caps I use are all pressed from sheets and consistently have a light oxide layer from storage. I found the easiest way to remove this is a light going over with some scotch Bright. After a quick sprinkle of IPA, these parts are ready for welding. With this being a rather critical part of the tank, I tend to go back over this world to ensure the joint is fully fused. And that is one fully welded top cap. Now all the main body is formed, we need to do what I like to call fitment finessing. Here we are simply lowering any high spots in the pressing to remove any gaps that may show up whilst welding. With all of our main parts now ready, it's time to get this all tacked up. So, rather annoyingly, I've just tacked this all up 
and put it onto press record. Are you little maggot? You make me want to vomit! I always knew it was going to happen. It's just annoying it's happened on a bit I can't redo. The gist of it is making sure the caps are square. A bit like that. Now that the body is fully tacked up, it's time for a quick clean down and then we're on to welding. And there we have it, one fully welded tank body. While this is cooling down, it's time to take a look at the next part of the job, which is the ins and the outs. For this tank, we'll be using a 16 mm outlet and a 10 mm inlet. First on the cards is the 10 mm tube. For this tube, we'll be pressing rather than rolling the bead in today's second pressing tool. Unfortunately, I did cut this tube a couple of millimetres too long, so we have a little bit of a wobble. But it's not a problem, as the next stage will remove this. So, that is our 10mm inlet made up. A little bit wobbly, but it will do the job. I did want to show you guys how I make these which is a 16mm outlet but it seems I've thought too far ahead and I've cut up all my material for stock so I'm just going to give you a quick insight into the tool that I use which is this this acts in exactly the same way as the bead former where you have a set of tooling that creates a bead in tube with this you simply pop your tube in tighten up the clamp and spin it round and that's what creates that bead with both our inlet and outlet now formed, we need to get this tank body drilled and set their position. Now we have both positioning holes drilled, it's time to move on to the final welding stages for the tank. And there we have one fully formed aluminium header tank. You might notice I've not put any mountains on this yet. And that's mainly because I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with it. But when I do make that decision, I'll probably make this as short so you guys can see the outcome. And that's it for this week's episode. So next week, we're going to be announcing the winner of our first monthly giveaway. Still got a few days left. Links in the description. And we've got a bit of a surprise for you guys because we'll be doing our second monthly giveaway. I'm not going to give too much away, but I'll say that the results will speaker for themselves. So, 
Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.